Welcome back, everybody. So we're heading up. It's that time of the year, elk hunting. Woo, super excited. So October 14th, and um, oh boy, major drama, scary stuff. Uh, been hunting this mountain for 20 years. Steve, my hunting buddy and my friend, arrived at the mountain earlier. He said just about every pullover uh, for the mountain has signs this year that say no parking overnight, no camping. Of course, they're talking the parking lot. You can camp up in the National Forest. So we're heading down there, and we've got a couple hours of daylight left. We're going to have to go into panic mode here and uh, try to find some place where we can park, and we might have to hike up a different part of the mountain than we are accustomed to. So it's first day of hunting season, elk. Uh, it's about 5.30 in the morning. And as it turns out, yes, we could not find a place to park last night. So for whatever reason, uh, they made a new rule up here where we hunt. And uh, all the county roads had signs posted on the pullover spots leading into the National Forest saying no overnight camping or parking. We weren't going to camp there because we camp here up in the mountains, but no parking. So we ended up having to get a hotel uh, <laughs> and then getting up at 4 a.m. And here we are. It's about 6.47 a.m. Uh, again, things change this year, but I feel good. The working out just helps out so much. The last several months I've been on the treadmill wearing my boots and a 65-pound backpack, so everything feels really easy this year, even at 50 years old. Really good. Um, we hiked about a mile up in to where we used to camp. And now about another mile past that, up higher. No sign yet. Just going one foot in front of the other. Look at what I see. Nice. So this is a nice blessing right here. It's a chewed up antler. You know, not the prettiest thing, but it keeps your motivation high. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned, I didn't mention this yet. La last year was the worst year of hunting ever on this mountain. So this is the 18th year that I've hunted this mountain specifically. Last year was the first time I've never seen rubs or never seen elk, never smelled elk. It was rough. So that's another one of the reasons why we switched from muzzleloading back to rifle to go a month later this year. Still no rubs and no smell of elk. Have found some droppings that are fairly fresh and some tracks for the past couple of weeks. You know what I always find funny? One of the things I find funny is you'll be out here in the middle of nowhere. Where, I mean, we are off the grid, baby. We are backcountry here. And, you know, you're thinking to yourself, well, no one else has ever walked right here. And then you find this. A Hogan number three golf ball. This is great news for me. Of course, an elk rub doesn't mean that there are elk here. It means there was an elk here. But last year, we didn't see any rubs. I hunted here five days last year, muzzleloading, zero fresh rubs for the first time ever for me on this mountain. Right there, fresh rub, dripping sap, and mane hair all there. Hehe, <laughs> means elk have been here recently, and I'm finding fresh droppings. Encouragement level up. Nice to see the aspens yellow again. It's been a couple of years since the timing has been right during any of my seasons, so I haven't personally seen the aspens yellow up here in, man, probably close to a decade. You gotta be so careful, especially I'm not a spring chicken anymore. Steve's hunting on another part of the mountain and uh, just going slow. Hey man, I tell you what, for what it's worth, I got new Kenetrek boots this year. Wow. I'm trying to balance the camera here on a deadfall tree. And no, I didn't have $500 to drop on a brand new pair of Kenetreks. Uh, in fact, this is the first brand new pair of hunting boots I've bought in my life and I'm 50 years old. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Uh, my last pair I've had for 20 years. It was a pair of Cabela's uh, Outfitter boots with the Goodyear welt, the Goodyear soles and everything. 
Uh, I still have them, 20 years old, but obviously, you know, they're <laughs> starting to fall apart a little bit. I found these on eBay. These are $500 Canatrex. I found them on eBay. I did a buy it now with a wholesaler out of Missouri, I think. Got them for 240 bucks steel baby so if you look around and do your due diligence you can find some good deals on some good boots there's a burl here i think that's what you call this on this aspen it is pretty sweet That tree really stands out. Got a new Mountain Ops Nalgene this year with a screaming bull. That's motivation right there, baby. Check that out. very little sign so depressing when it comes to elk <laughs> but uh, scenery sure is helping out a little bit Day number one, winding down, I had to keep reminding myself to not give up because uh, whew, the pickings are slim and uh, not much sign. Zero elk. It's 4.30 a.m. Day number two. Last night, we actually stayed at a condo. Uh, Steve's wife and family were up here on vacation. And uh, so we stayed at their condo for the last night. All the main parking spots around this mountain suddenly had signs saying you weren't allowed to park there overnight anymore. Uh, lest you think we were relaxing. No, we had about five and a half hours of sleep. And I've been dealing with some type of a major rib cage slash kidney or something injury. I inj injured, injured myself in the garage about a week ago helping my son trying to put a pedal on a bicycle. I slipped and something popped uh, right around the lower part of my right rib cage. It almost feels like I bruised the liver, you know, or an organ there. You're not gonna be able to see it in this video at 4.30 in the morning, but how our elk hunting starts out is we have about a mile hike, literally straight uphill. And I mean straight uphill, it is straight uphill up a boulder strewn path up the mountain. And then from there, it's just normal crazy mountain hiking with valleys and hills and stuff like that. I wanna walk through this meadow over here before it gets light. And uh, of course, when you stop, you get cold. Real brisk up on these ridges, so I had to throw on this lightweight face mask thing here. Well. Fresh rub, the second one I've seen, you know, obviously this is within the last couple of weeks or so. So two fresh rubs for me, one fresh rub for Steve. All right, day number three, day number two was a wash, a lot of hiking, 12, 13, 14 miles, who knows? Nothing, no sign of elk. We're in another location near our normal mountain today. All right, that was a bust this morning as well. Zero elk sign, we covered six miles and we were hunting stealthy, just nothing. The elk are not there. Uh, grabbed breakfast at a restaurant and now we're back at the place where we were last night. And uh, we're gonna go in early, it's only 11 a.m. We're going to the top. We're gonna hike up a couple hours and see what can happen. 
It's in God's hands. Day number three come to an end. Probably never end up producing this video because it appears the elk are gone. Found an amazing new area here last night. We put the miles on today, big time. And uh, sign like crazy. Looks like it was the rut of the century, literally last month. I mean, we've never seen so many rubs, used wallows, tracks, insane. But uh, they are nowhere to be found. Cannot see an elk, cannot spook an elk. Day number four, we're in another new mountain because we have exhausted our uh, possibilities here and uh, we can't turn up elk anywhere. I don't think it's happening this year.